So I had my uh, telly on in the background the other day while I was doing some work on the computer and uh, an episode of Police Interceptors came on. It just caught my eye for a moment and uh, I was watching it and it was this particular part of the uh, of the programme that I found interesting and how the police can make, in my opinion, a, a very simple cock-up uh, which shouldn't have happened, which potentially could have caused a huge problem between uh, you know this lad and, and his father. I mean, his father's face when the police speaking to him you know it's priceless it looks like he's going to absolutely rip his kid's head off so i decided to put this on here as uh, just to sort of show you the kind of stuff that even the police are allowing on the telly you know it's i mean clearly it's it's to show how you know how the police are human and you know they can make mistakes but it's not just the mistake it's how they handled the mistake and you know the lead up to realizing that the lad that they had wasn't actually the person they were looking for anyway i'm going to play this uh, i want to let you see for yourself and then i'll explain my reasons for the fact that I think the police made quite a huge balls up in this incident. The gate with a kitchen knife saying he's going to stab police. Crime is on the rise. Armed with a axe and a machete. Trying to break into two separate houses. But come at the hour. More units, more units. Come at the interceptors. Get on the floor! Out and running, out and running. We're riding with West Yorkshire's elite. This is police interceptors. Coming up, a suspected fuel thief has a near miss. Let that through the red line. And the interceptors are chasing a crafty crook in a van who's carrying a load of stolen diesel in the back nicked from a local supermarket. So I want to make it clear right now that if the van is full of, of diesel and he's driving like a complete tit, then he needs to be stopped at the end of the day. I'm not condoning any criminal acts at all or anything that's going to endanger other people. So right from the get-go, I want to make sure that you understand that I do not, I'm not saying that the police are doing the wrong thing by chasing this guy. It's what they do afterwards that pissed me off. The van looks seriously overloaded as it nearly loses control. But instead of pulling over, the driver hits the gas. Vehicle failing to stop quite far road. Uh, a white male driver, uh, possibly wearing a an Adidas top, I can see three white stripes in the mirror. Possibly wearing a an Adidas top, I can see three white stripes in the mirror. Possibly wearing a an Adidas top, I can see three white stripes in the mirror. But the only running he's doing at the moment is a red light. After 10 minutes, the driver pulls into the supermarket he allegedly stole the petrol from. Yeah, I think he's getting all potentially looking to bail here. Just travelling and she stole it. The driver legs it and manages to give the officers the slip. The eye in the sky is nearby. The helicopter's out searching. has located a male matching the description. In Brighouse, so uh, we're just going to uh, go and see if we can intercept this male. They spot the man identified by the helicopter, and Richard introduces himself. You all right, mate? How are you doing? Ah, this your car? No, it's my dad's. I'm just cleaning it for him. OK. Yeah, right, you've been followed by a helicopter from yeah. a transit van in Brighouse. Yeah. OK. Were you in that transit van? No, I have been. Abandoned at Tesco's? I've been at Tesco's, but I've been in OK. Van. You've been followed by that helicopter. OK. Right. We suspect you're the driver of that car. OK. Now, car. tell me the truth now, no, or else you'll be getting in a lot of trouble, yeah? I haven't been in okay. no Right. The police would like you to think that lying to them will get you into a whole heap of trouble. However, if that was the case, then police would be getting in trouble <laughs> all the time for lying. This next clip is very short, 
Uh, this is from one of the best channels on YouTube. It's Crime Bodge. I'm going to ask you, if you're not already subscribed to Crime Bodge, head on over. I'll put a link in the description. Number three, lying to the police. If you're ever questioned by the police, they will happily give you the impression that if you lie to them, you'll be in big trouble without actually telling you what that big trouble will be. That's because lying to the police isn't an offence. If it were, almost everyone who talks to them would be in jail. In extreme cases, you could be prosecuted for wasting police time or perverting the course of justice, such as Geoffrey Archer, who got four years for lying to a court over a decade earlier to win a half a million pound libel case. But simply telling the police something that isn't true is not an offence. It's only when you start making statutory declarations such as sworn statements, passport applications, job applications and lying in court where the trouble starts, all of which are offences under the 1911 Perjury Act. But even if you did tell the police a lie of such epic proportions it helped you or someone else evade justice, you cannot be prosecuted for a lie that you genuinely believe to be true. A belief is not a lie no matter how misinformed it turns out to be. Okay. Just come and have a seat for a minute. No, no, we'll get your dad, don't worry. The lad claims to have returned from the same supermarket, but denies any involvement. However, his top matches the suspect's description. No, it doesn't. You lying piece of shit. Time for a quick Q&A. What's your name, pal? Just try and relax, mate. Just try and relax, all right? We're just trying to get to the bottom of what's going on. The lad is clearly nervous and not exactly behaving like a seasoned fuel bandit. This is his dad here. Hello, are you all right? Is this your car, sir? Yeah. Is this your son I've got in the back of my car? Well, he's been in a transit down in Brighouse. Well, he's been in a transit down in Brighouse. Well, he's been in a transit down in Brighouse. Oh, right, OK. So it's all right for you to bullshit. To fit your narrative. Yeah. yeah. Abandoned transit and then run off full of by helicopter up here. Okay. So what's been do we know what it what it's been in it for? I've no idea, it's full of stolen fuel in the back yeah. of it. So I don't know what's going on at the minute. The lad's supposed to be shampooing his dad's car, so stories of a potential fuel heist come as quite a shock to his dad. Obviously, he wasn't here at some point, no, no, was he? No, he went it? down to Tesco's to get some car shampoo. Right. Yeah, that's what he told me. Well, he came back with car shampoo, so... OK. I take it you've not seen him with a transit. You don't own a transit. OK. Right. Obviously, we're just going to have to get the officers that followed him and he's run off from uh, to come up and ID him, see if this is the same male here. Yeah? Well, the grooming gangs are safe for a while, aren't they? How many cops have they got here for one lad that's detained in a vehicle, not going anywhere? Fucking useless bunch of... Piggies. That's okay. Well, we're not saying you've done out wrong, are we? Really? Really? You're going to sit there and say that to him? Really? You're going to look him in the eyes and tell him you're not saying done anything wrong? My God, you are fucking disgusting. We're just having a chat with you. The officer from the earlier pursuit arrives to identify the lad. Is this young man really a criminal mastermind? Yeah. Okay. That's okay. Or is he clean as a whistle? How are you doing? Mm, no, Alright, it's not him then man. That's fine, as long as uh, as long as you're happy it's not him, that's fine. It's a case of mistaken identity by the helicopter, and the lad has avoided a trip to the Nick, but he's not getting off cleaning his dad's car. So obviously we'll let him out into your care. He can crack on with the uh, with the jobs he should be doing, shouldn't he? He can crack on with the jobs he should be doing. Hmm, how ironic. <laughs> right, pal. Okay. Officer's happy it wasn't you. Okay. But obviously it just looked at your clothing's the same as the person. Unfortunately they had three stripes on their arms. So it's not the fucking same then, you dickhead. Okay. Obviously it just looked a bit suspicious yeah, for, the camp, for the helicopter. Let's take care then. Crack on with your dad's cleaning. <laughs> well, I'll tell you one thing. If the police done that to my children on my doorstep and then thought it was funny afterwards, I would not be laughing. I would be making an immediate complaint about the way that they've treated my son, the accusations they've made. Knowing full well after seeing the initial suspect 
get out and run from the vehicle, that he was not wearing the same clothes. Oh, my God.